Well, thank you, Meg Madden, for being on Flora Funga podcast today. I like how I just found you on Instagram. I was, I don't, I think I was really getting into like in one day and I just kind of saw your account and your photos are just spectacular. So um, yeah, what kind of got you into taking pictures of plants and fungi? Well, um, I've always been interested in nature. I grew up in a very rural area with mm. um, woods in the back of the house and a river and a waterfall and a big field. And I was an only child until my brother came along when I was six and there were no other kids in the neighborhood. So I spent a lot of my time out in nature because mm. that was what I had. And, um, you know, so I've always been interested in in nature and connecting with nature. And I'm also an artist. So um, I feel like this is something that I've started doing that's been able to tie the art and the science and nature together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, yeah, I, I didn't know after looking into like your Etsy and stuff like that, I didn't even know that you had um, all these other avenues of like artistic things. So that was really cool to see. Um, and what was like your inspiration of making that specific Instagram? And what is your handle again? So it's can have uh, at Meg Madden Design. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's my Instagram. So my Instagram account was originally for promoting my jewelry. I'm a jeweler. Okay. I started making jewelry back in about 2005. Mm -hmm. It was an overlap business with my cut flower farm. I was a cut flower grower for 12 oh, years. That's awesome. So I have a background in horticulture and botany as well. Perfect. And yeah, I started an Instagram account for the jewelry. And then um, back in March of 2020, COVID hit and mm -hmm. everything was shut down. And my daughter was not in school anymore. And so we had just moved to an area where we back up to a, a town forest there's a lot of acreage behind our behind our house that's forest and mm -hmm. we just started going out in the woods and so um we started noticing tiny little red mushrooms that were growing oh. when absolutely nothing else was growing there were no leaves on the trees the spring wildflowers hadn't come up yet and we were very intrigued about what they were so mm -hmm. we photographed them and then looked them up and that sort of was the slippery slope I feel like for <laughs> <laughs> becoming really intrigued with mushrooms and mm -hmm. it was really neat because we you know it's sort of the silver lining to COVID I think was that we were suddenly afforded all of this time to be in the woods every day and so right. she actually did a spring project for school um, it was called Woods Waking Up and so we cataloged all of the plant and fungi and animal species that we discovered between um, when school was closed and oh, the end of the school cool. year and did a presentation about it. Oh, wow. That's really neat. And where are you at right now? Uh, I live in Midbury, Vermont. Okay. Vermont. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Nice. And is the mushrooms there awesome or what is oh, like, wow. um, it's incredible. And this <laughs> year has been absolutely perfect for it. We had a little bit of a dry summer last year. So mm -hmm. I feel like we had some mushrooms early on and then there was a big break and then we had some rain in the fall and I got the fall mushrooms. But this year we've had rain and we've had just like the perfect temperatures for it. Ooh. And there've been so many mushrooms that I'm out photographing mushrooms and they're literally mushrooms on mushrooms and I'm trying <laughs> not to step on mushrooms while oh I'm taking gosh. photos. Yeah, it's been phenomenal. And wow. I've been posting on Instagram and there are folks who are in drier parts of the United States that are have been really, really jealous about the fact that the mushrooms have just gone bonkers this year. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I feel like some parts are extra wet or some parts are extra dry and it's a weird mixture of um, like climate and weather. So that is, that's awesome that mushrooms are booming by you. Yeah. And I've <laughs> seen things I've never seen before. It's been pretty phenomenal. Wow. Wow. And how long have you been doing photography? Uh, let's see. Well, I would say, um, I asked for a camera for my birthday in about 2000 and I wanted a film camera mm -hmm. and I figured it was like learning how to 
tie my shoes before I had Velcro kind of thing. And I really wanted to know how to use a camera manually. Oh, and okay. so I started out on an Olympus 35 millimeter film camera. And mm -hmm. then in about mm, probably 2003 or four, I got my first uh, digital camera. And so at that time I was growing flowers and I was taking photos of flowers and I got really into macro photography at that point. Okay. So a lot of flowers and close-ups of insects. Yeah. And I was also using it for taking photos of my jewelry for my Etsy shop. Got it. Got it. So yeah, yeah. what is, what is your main um, focus right now? Around uh, The main focus is really around the mushrooms and everything that's come about because of my Instagram account. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of opportunities come up because of the Instagram that I would never have had if I hadn't had that account. Yeah. Yeah. What, what has changed from when I, I think I first um, messaged you a couple months ago and what has changed from the, the spring to now? What have you been up to? Um, I think so much. <laughs> so much. So <laughs> I first started posting mushroom photos, I would say last summer. Okay. And then at that point I had, you know, just several hundred followers, I think. Mm -hmm. And between that time and December, I hit a thousand followers mm -hmm. and I was super, super excited about that. And mm -hmm. then between mid December and now I'm, I just hit 22,000 followers wow. yesterday. Yeah, I, I saw that and I was like, whoa, I that's awesome. That, <laughs> I feel like you grew so fast since I started it talking really to you. Fast. Yeah, awesome. it's been nine months and 21,000 followers. So wow. that's been pretty fun. Yeah, that's really cool. And I saw that you've been doing some mushroom walks. Like what kind of um, opportunities have you come across with the Instagram account? Yeah, so um the Instagram account, I didn't realize that, I mean, it makes sense that this is happening, but there are like talent scouts in oh. the world who are combing Instagram for interesting folks doing interesting things. And I've actually had quite a few opportunities come up because of my Instagram account. And this is sort of my first public announcement of this, but mm. I was actually asked to write a book whoa and I was oh. found through Instagram oh wow yeah that's really neat so publishing company about writing a book okay wow that's that's awesome yeah it's uh it's daunting and exciting <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I think it's going to be a really great experience awesome and is that about just like your life or is it more about I don't know if you can what you can tell but yeah so uh it's a book about mushrooms and so okay. basically what it's going to be is um it's part of a series and there's already one about birds and there's one about national parks and mm. so this is about mushrooms specifically and okay um you know it's sort of a an overview of mushrooms and mushroom species across the united states wow that's an awesome opportunity congratulations yeah, pretty phenomenal <laughs> Uh, wow. And do you have specific places that you usually like to, um, go for mushrooms around or to, or specifically to, uh, photograph? Yeah. So if I have just a, a little bit of time, mm -hmm. I usually pop out behind my house. There are quite a few mushrooms back there. Oh, wow. Um, so close. but there are a few places, uh, honestly, I haven't really, had to travel more than probably an hour from where I live in any direction. Wow. But there are a few places within about a half an hour that I really, really like. Mm -hmm. um, the conditions are perfect. Even if we're having a little bit of a dry spell, you know, I can find places that tend to be uh, more shadowed and damp, which, you know, mushrooms love that. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's some definite hot spots around here. Hmm. And if you were asked to like travel and take pictures would you do that or are you very about Vermont's um mushrooms um no I mean if I had an opportunity to travel I certainly would it mm -hmm. just happened to be that 
you know, I haven't really had to, and right. with COVID, there hasn't been any traveling. So I've been That's also true. here anyway. Right. Um, I, I am very interested in the funga of Vermont. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually have an iNaturalist account. And so I'm really behind in cataloging observations at this point, it's sort of a winter project, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to, I mean, it was an accidental thing to begin with, but it's gotten to the point where I'm trying to catalog all the macro species of funga in Vermont that I possibly can. Mm, mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I naturalist is a really awesome app if nobody or if yeah, nobody else knows about it. It's, it's awesome. I like that. Um, and I know you have so many things going on right now. How do you find balance between, cause you have a family, you have a a kid and the Etsy account, but the Instagram account, how do you kind of find time for yourself and the balance with all that? Um, well, because I work for myself and I'm making my own schedule, it can be really hard to balance everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not like I have a nine to five where I feel like I, I have a start time and a stop time for work. Yeah. And so, sometimes that's good. And sometimes that's bad. Sometimes I feel like (laughs) I need the line and sometimes it's good because I can work at odd times of the day, like Mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning when my daughter's asleep and the house is quiet and I have no other demands. Um, so I don't know, sometimes it's tricky and I feel like, uh, you know, I need to make a schedule for myself sometimes. Like today I'm going to write for two hours. I'll give myself a break and, you know, go out in the woods for an hour, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in between doing other things or, you know, limit the amount of time I'm checking emails or give myself a certain amount of time to spend on Instagram because with the Instagram account and it growing to the point where it has, Mm -hmm. um, I'm spending time not only making posts, but also answering DMs and right. answering comments. And I really try to be very personable with my account. And mm-hmm. I can't really answer every comment that comes in, but I try really hard to at least answer, you know, as many as I can in a way that I'm keeping a balance with everything else. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I spend a lot of time just answering people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know social media just kind of sucks you in sometimes. So I appreciate um, the time that you're giving me today. And yeah, I feel like you do post a lot. So um, I appreciate your posts. And, I and my posts wait. have really changed too. I mm-hmm. feel like originally it was, hey, look at this cool mushroom, you know, and some hashtags. And right. then as I got more interested in finding out what they are, Mm -hmm. I started posting a little bit more information about them. And then I got a lot of feedback from people saying, we love the photography. It's amazing, but we also love the information. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much. And Mm -hmm. so my posts have gotten more elaborate as far as not just maybe one photo of a mushroom, but I'll do a series where I'll do a macro photo and then I try to do a photo that's a little more zoomed out and I try to do a photo with something in it for scale, like my hand or my finger. Right. Yep. Because I was having people say, well, I had no idea that was so small or, or what have you. And then I try to give a little bit of scientific information about the species, where you can find it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people are always interested in edibility uh, and that sort of thing. Yep, so, um, you know, it takes, it takes quite a bit of time sometimes to actually curate a post right yeah and are you um how are you finding some information are you do, using iNaturalist or are you like IDing in a book um iNaturalist is really handy I actually have a few mushroom guides that mm. are physical books which I have never opened <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I looked at them years ago probably but since I became really interested in mushrooms mm-hmm. recently I never use books. So people yeah. ask me, do you have guides that you'd recommend? And honestly, I say, you know, if you sign up for iNaturalist, it's really great because you can, you know, use it when you get back home. You can mm-hmm. upload photos that you've taken. You can use it in the field. You can shoot a photo right there. And yeah. 
The tough thing with mushrooms is that oftentimes you need to look at the top and the bottom of a mushroom. You need the cap and then you need information about the undersurface of it yes. as well. Yep. And iNaturalist is looking, I mean, it can only look at one picture at a time. And so it does have a little bit of a difficult time occasionally pinpointing mm, true. species, but I find that it's a good starting point. So mm -hmm. Uh, it'll give suggestions, like it'll give up to 10 suggestions. And then I'll choose a few that I think look really close. And then I go online and I have various sites that I look at that are really great for information. And so that's sort of my sleuthing point. And then mm -hmm. I go from there to try to figure out what it is. Nice. Awesome. I like that. Um, yeah. And I was um, looking at the, the mushroom walk that you're going to do. And what is malt? So malt is Middlebury Area Land Trust. Okay. We're an organization in my area that um, are, they're sort of like the stewards of a bunch of land that was put into trust. They manage a big trail system around the area. I think it's 18 miles of trails, mm -hmm. official trails, and then a lot of side trails. And they do um, outreach programs and uh, adult programming and children's program programming. They do summer camps and they do after school camps. They, um, you know, do fundraisers like okay. trail runs and things like that. And so I started partnering with them over the summer. I actually uh, did an Instagram takeover for them. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was me and a few other local photographers. And it was neat because they all have different styles like one was a um more like an I guess like a sports photographer so he was posting a lot about humans on the trail and how they oh. use the trail and then another photographer was um he's an aerial photographer so okay. he has a drone and he takes aerial photographs and then there were my photographs which were which are mostly macro so mm -hmm sort of covered a lot of areas and it was a it was a neat way to look at the the trail system yeah and then I did um a fundraiser with them where we printed a bunch of uh, note card sets of my mushroom photographs mm -hmm. and they gave them out to donors and then they just asked me to be their keynote speaker and um you know guest at their annual celebration so that's actually tomorrow night and okay. wow. I'm hosting a walk and then running back home <laughs> and doing a zoom presentation. And the presentation is a slideshow of mushrooms of Vermont. Awesome. I think I, I think I will be at work during it, but I will be watching it. So awesome. <laughs> on the <Yeah>. side, <laughs> it, it is being recorded. So I'll okay. get a copy of that. And I think I'm going to try to figure out a way to, Ooh get that up and running for folks who can't make it. Yes, that'd be but awesome. I have tuning in from all over the world. So that's pretty exciting. Wow. That is impressive. I love that. Um, yeah. Awesome. And yeah, so the main um, topic that I really wanted to cover with you is how you kind of, since you're an artist, but you also love the science of things, how do you kind of see the resemblance between art and um, I guess, mushrooms or plants or just science in general? Uh, well, I guess I'm a, I'm a visual person mm -hmm. and I've always been interested in art and been involved in art in some sort of way. And I've always been interested in science. And I ended up going to art school and studying fine arts, mm -hmm. but I had sort of toyed with the idea of go going into scientific illustration. And that never really materialized. But after art school, I ended up growing cut flowers. I did that for 12 years, like I said. And then I was actually an entomologist for six years. Oh. And so I've worked in the sciences quite a bit. And I think I mentioned too that I feel like this is the first thing I've done where I am able to combine the science and the art and also I've done a lot with um, teaching and, and outreach mm -hmm. and I'm able to do that with this as well. And so it's really exciting to be able to do one thing that encompasses all of those things. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me with the mushrooms, it really started out as 
a visual curiosity. I mean, they're so incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. And before I started seriously hunting for mushrooms, I had no idea that there was such diversity, first of all, right. in species, but also in just how they look. Yes. Um, you know, I had sort of a notion of what mushrooms look like. And I think a lot of people do. It's sort of mm -hmm. like, you know, the supermarket variety and then maybe a little more exotic than that. But I mean, I'm finding mushrooms that are smaller than my pinky nail and their turquoise and wow. teal blue and mushrooms that look like coral and sea life and you know just the wildest things and I had no idea that it was that that was out there and so mm -hmm. I'm really excited to photograph those beautiful organisms and I feel like when I'm making a post on Instagram it's not just a photograph of a mushroom but I feel like it's sort of a portrait of it and I'm trying mm -hmm. to portray it in a way that it's beautiful and it engages people visually um, and it does the mushroom justice. And then also, um, you know, gives people a little bit of science, just enough that it's interesting, not so much that it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of people, uh, you know, say that they're out in nature more and they're noticing their surroundings more because of it. And I just, wow. I think that's really great. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to ask is if a lot of your um, followers are into the mushroom thing or are they more into art? And did you kind of persuade either side to get more into the other? Um, you know, I think a lot of folks are find my account because the photographs are visually interesting. Mm -hmm but then they get sort of sucked into <laughs> the science of it. And what I love about mushrooms is I feel like you can get involved with them on so many levels. So, mm. you know, if you want to just look at someone's Instagram account and enjoy their photographs, great. Yeah. If you want to, you know, go out and hike and look at mushrooms and take photographs, wonderful. If you want to get more into it and start you know, really looking for mushrooms and then learning about them, mm -hmm. you know, it's a whole nother level. And I feel like, um, you know, they're just really accessible to people on, on a lot of levels. Yeah, no, I agree. I really like, um, yeah, being able to, I guess, please everyone with either the visualness of it or the scientific part of it. So that's cool that you've even evolved your posts into something, um, not just the mushroom or hashtag. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I've had a few people say that, and I never really thought about this while I was doing it, but as I started becoming more and more familiar with mushrooms and spending mm -hmm. more time out in the woods, I started getting much, much lower. So my vantage point of the mushrooms went from standing up and taking photographs of the top of them to I'm now laying on the ground and <laughs> um, just getting all up in there. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, uh, you know, I figure someday somebody's going to think I'm having a medical emergency or something because I'm laid out on the ground in the yes. woods. But I'm trying to get a view of the mushrooms. I call it the slugs eye view or the mm. bugs eye view where, mm -hmm. you know, you're really face to face with it or you're looking up underneath it and the sun is shining through the gills. And um, I've had people say that, you know, they, they either have never seen mushrooms like that, or they can't because, you know, um, they just can't lay on the ground like that. Like right. I can't. So they, you know, I get a lot of thanks from people saying, um, Aww. that they really appreciate that viewpoint. Oh, that's awesome. That's actually what I was just about to ask is how you capture, um, certain pictures or do you have tips and tricks to what, like, what is your favorite view? Um, so yeah. I guess. Yeah. And, and I actually, I use an iPhone, so I'm taking all of my photographs with a smartphone. Wow. And yeah. And, uh, I have a macro lens. That's an add-on lens. Yep. Yep. And I've gone through a couple of those and found one that I finally really uh -huh. like. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, oftentimes I am literally laying on the ground and, or, 
you know, I have my head stuffed up a log or something <laughs> because there's something <laughs> interesting to look at. And I have lots of friends with, you know, big fancy camera rigs with giant lenses and things like that. And mm -hmm. there are some advantages to that in things like being able to uh, focus stack images so that the whole image is um, clear from front to back and right. you know, okay. low light stuff like taking photos of bioluminescent fungi. I can't really do that with right. the iPhone, but it's super convenient to have my phone with me. I mean, it's with me all the time, Right. I can stick it in my pocket and I can get in really close and really low where I feel like a lot of the um, photographers I'm talking to that are also photographing mushrooms have a hard time um, with that sort of vantage point. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, I'm not one to lug around a lot of stuff. I'm a lot more spontaneous than that. Yeah. So I feel like I would get annoyed with a lot of big equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense because that'd be a lot to carry around with you. And then you also get more pictures and maybe it I, I guess in the end gets, uh, gets you further with multiple and yeah, diverse. It's, it's definitely more spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm really never using a tripod. Occasionally I'll be outside and I want to take a time lapse of something like a slime yeah. mold and I just rig it. I yes. pack a bunch of logs <laughs> and get a little stick and prop everything up and leave it for a while, but that's as fancy as I get. <laughs> awesome. Do you have a favorite thing that you photograph at the moment? Um, I think if you look at my Instagram account, I do take a lot of photos of mushroom gills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sort of obsessed with that view, that viewpoint. Uh, I love uh, light through gills. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I could just never get enough of <laughs> things. So. I that's awesome that's yeah that's very specific I like that answer <laughs> yeah oh and and texture too I mean mm -hmm. I'm very interested in in textures I'm a tactile person I've always touched things my mom mm -hmm. as a kid told me not to touch things and <laughs> it didn't work out and nope. to this day I just posted a video of me touching a slimy sticky slime mold and I thought sorry mom <laughs> this sorry, is just mom. Not sorry mom <laughs> <laughs> I like um, that. Yeah, so texture is a big thing and and actually I was interviewed for an article that is on the Adobe website about textures and photography Ooh. and that's actually up on their website now and oh, awesome. uh, they interviewed me and they used some of my photographs in the article so that's exciting too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you have to send me that link or I guess I'll, I'll have to find it because that sounds interesting to yeah. add on. And what does a typical day look like for you trying to balance everything? Um, I usually use Instagram as my wake up tool. <laughs> I bring up a little bit. I try to connect with people and answer some comments, DMs. Um, sometimes I'm with it enough to put up a post that early in the morning. Oh. And then, um, you know, I get my daughter up and running for her day and then I come home and answer emails um get Etsy orders out if I have orders that have come in mm -hmm. and at that point if I haven't posted I usually post I try to get outside during a good time of the day I mean this time of year I'm losing my daylight hours and oh. in the woods it gets even darker so I have to consider you know what kind of daylight I have and what what the light is like and so you know, I try to prioritize with getting outside when the conditions are just right and then working everything else around that. Hmm. And right yeah. now I'm, I'm having to, um, you know, I'm putting together a presentation for tomorrow and then I'm also writing. So yeah. getting that in too. Yeah, that is a lot to juggle, which, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and writing, I need, I need the right mindset for that because it's it's really technical writing right um, so sometimes if I'm tired or it's just the wrong time of day for it I've mm -hmm. learned that I just need to walk away from it like I can't sit and force it right and so that's usually the time when I put on my hiking boots and I head outside for a while 
That's awesome. Yeah, that's important to get outside every day. I I know that near me in Minnesota, it's mushroom season. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I don't know how Vermont is. Is it always kind of like a consistent thing or until winter? This summer, it really has been. I Mm -hmm. feel like the mushrooms took a teeny tiny little bit of a break for about, I don't know, maybe two weeks at the end of August, beginning of September. Mm -hmm. It got a little dry, but we've been getting cooler weather. The, The dew point is such that, you know, it's pretty wet when I wake up in the mornings Mm -hmm. and um we've gotten some rain so they're really happy again I just went out for a hike last weekend and I parked the car I uh mushroom hunted for three and a half hours and realized I was still five minutes from the car (laughs) that's awesome yeah wow that is a lot of mushrooms yeah that's a lot of mushrooms (laughs) that's awesome Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I was on, this is a side note, but yeah, I was on your Etsy account and I was looking for new like winter boots, just like casual boots that I wear. So yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I need actually new boots. Um, so I found some on your, um, on your account. So thank you for that. They were super cute. So I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm. Um, what does your future look like? Do you think, um, with, with Meg Madden? design? Um, well, I have less and less time for my jewelry making, Mm -hmm. which is fine. That's, that's gone from being my bread and butter and Mm -hmm. mainstay to sort of my extra and Mm -hmm. the mushroom work has definitely taken the front burner, which is great. I'm really Mm -hmm. excited about it. And I feel like being able to combine something that I love for work um, is great because it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot to do. And sometimes it's a little stressful trying to figure out how to fit it all in, but I keep reminding myself that it's something that I want to be doing. And I'm really, really, really lucky to, you know, have this amazing opportunity come my way and, you know, I get to go out and play in the woods for work and I get to engage with people for my job and I get to photograph mushrooms and I have this amazing account on Instagram where I've made some really good friends and really awesome connections with people. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like that's been wonderful as well. So as hectic and crazy as it gets, I'm grateful every day. And as far as the future, I, you know, I'd like to write more. So, um, you know, this book is, is a great opportunity, but I'd also like to publish a book of my photographs Mm. and, um, on the near horizon, I'm putting together prints and note cards and calendars. Ooh, so yeah. Doing some more print stuff and then much more outreach. So I have scheduled several walks this year and I have even more walks scheduled for next year. So I'll be doing a lot more of that. Um, I've been asked to do a bunch more uh presentations so slide presentations and talking about mushrooms of Vermont so I have you know all of that on my horizon and I've been talking to some folks who have a farm um, nearby that has some property and they host events and so I've been talking to them about hosting a mushroom festival Ooh, yeah so I'd really really like to get a mushroom festival going here in Vermont. Yes. I would yeah. love to come to that. That'd be yeah. so, that'd be yeah. so I've awesome. had a lot of interest when I've mentioned it to people. Uh-huh. So I think it's going to be a matter of finding the right venue mm-hmm. and figuring out how to start on a scale that's reasonable, because I feel like at first I'm probably going to be doing a lot of the organization Yeah, and through doing that initially um, you know, networking, being able to network with people for future events and just sort of having it, it grow over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. That's yeah, super exciting. No, there isn't really one in this area. I know there's a big one okay. in Pennsylvania and there's a big one in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yep. Definitely. Vermont is perfect for it. We have the right climate and we certainly have mushrooms. So. Yes. Yeah. That'd be so awesome. Mm-hmm. I I love how I'm always uh, happy when people can combine their work 
and their like hobbies. So that's really cool that you um, ended up getting to do that. So for sure. Yeah. Hopefully I get to do that more in the future because that'd be nice to just, I don't know, somehow make a living from being out in nature. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, pretty awesome. Do you have advice for your younger self if you could go back? Yeah, I was thinking about that. And I think my advice to myself would be to take some time between high school and college Mm. so that I could experience more things and I could really think about what it was that I wanted to do because I feel like I've come to this place in my life in a very secure, circuitous way. And, you know, I've, I've done art and I've done science and um you know I've done lots I mean I've been a carpenter I was a cabinet maker I've you know I've done a lot of things and so um I feel like I'm I don't know if I could have come to this place more quickly than I have Mm. if I had taken some more time initially or if it happened this way because it was just meant to happen this way and the time is right now. And I had to have all of the experiences that I've had in order to be here doing this thing and appreciating it the way I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. You never really know, but you can't go back. So you'll still never know. Right. Exactly. Um, That's what I suppose. That's true. And do you have any advice for listeners that um, are kind of interested? They kind of have that art side, but they also like the science. Um, are we talking about like advice specifically about mushrooms or mushroom hunting or just life advice or? Yeah, maybe life advice. Um, but (laughs) sure. I'm the right person for that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, I think that for me, and a lot of people that I've talked to trying to get out in nature in some way Mm -hmm. as much as you can um, whether it's you know your local park I know everyone isn't blessed to live on acres and acres I mean Vermont is basically a big national forest so I can go anywhere and be instantly in the woods Um, but I find that being in nature is really grounding Mm -hmm. and it's definitely a huge part of my self-care program. And, uh, I feel like when things are getting overwhelming or depressing, (laughs) I mean, uh, you know, with COVID and climate change and, you know, politics and all those things that tend to sort of get me bummed out, um, Mm -hmm. Going out in nature doesn't make me forget about them. It just gives me an opportunity to ground myself, ground myself, and recenter, and connect with things that I feel like are ultimately important. And that is, you know, sort of the natural cycle of things. And mm-hmm. and if I can see it happening, it it makes me feel a lot more hopeful about everything else that's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah it gives I you a little sit there more. and watch a little, you know millipede cruising along a log or you know sitting there and watching mushroom spores in the air you know things like that it's just uh it makes me feel like that's that's the important stuff yeah yeah the little details add up and I agree I think more people should pay attention to the little the little things that make you hopeful and no matter what else is going on all of that is still happening regardless and so I feel like that that's a really good perspective for me. Yeah, that's, that is very grounding and humbling. So I like mm-hmm. that. Um, and I think I read somewhere that you were saying that anything could be art. Why do you believe that? Uh, I think that comes down to the fact that, I mean, for me, that's how my brain works. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I love details. And so you know, for me, an acorn cap is a piece of art and yeah. um, I love cooking and I love um, local food and I love, you know, pretty food. And so mm-hmm. I feel like 
I'm not just cooking a meal. I'm making something that's delicious and healthy, but also beautiful. Like I'm really into plating and I'm really into, you know, colorful salads and plates of food. And so I feel like, um, you know, it's just about putting a little extra care and detail into everything Mm -hmm. and like wrapping a present and making it pretty. Wow. It is. Wow. Little things, all those little things. And so I think that's what I was thinking about when I wrote that, that can be art, meaning you can um, really put care and love into every little thing you do. Yeah. Wow. I like that. Hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Um, and do you have like a favorite medium that you like to use? I think I, I swear you've done a little bit of everything. Do you have a preference? Uh, I have done a little bit of everything and <laughs> my house is chock full of art supplies. So I have every kind of paper and pencils and markers and my daughter is an artist. And so, yeah, it's basically like, you know, a craft store in here, arts and crafts (laughs) store. Um, I really love color pencils. Mm. I've been using color pencil for, you know, quite a few years, Mm. decades. And um, I, I think my current medium really is photography. Mm -hmm. And I love, um, you know, at, at one point I felt like photography was sort of like, eh, anybody can take a picture. Right. But now I'm realizing the more I'm involved with the photography, you can hand a camera to 10 people and mm-hmm. say, take a picture of that mushroom. And every yes. single photo is going to come out different because That's true. they're bringing themselves into the photograph. And yeah. so it's their take on what they're looking at and a photographer is really presenting an object or a situation in a way that they want the world to see it. Mm. So I'm framing a mushroom in a way that I want other people to see it. I want them to see it like I see it. And so, um, I feel like, you know, photography is a really interesting art form in that sense. That is very true. It's very like personal or, um, custom, custom person, person, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, personalized, I guess, yeah. but yeah. from the viewer, but also the taker. <laughs> yeah, sure. Awesome. And so behind you, are those mushrooms like hung up or how, how are these? Yeah, these are part of my mushroom collection. Okay. So they're pinned to the wall. Oh, I see. I have, um, piles and piles of mushrooms and so <laughs> uh most of them dry well and I keep them and then some I bring home and they just get kind of gross and they end up back <laughs> in the woods <laughs> yes no I, I saw that behind you and I was like how are those just hanging up there but yeah they're like pin like insects or yeah sort okay. of like insects yeah okay. I have a gathering basket it's this really obnoxious bright pink plastic thing And I originally started using it because I set things down and then I can't find them Mm. or forget that I set them down. Mm. And when you set something down in the woods, good luck finding it again. And so (laughs) instead of having some cute little, you know, Adirondack pack basket, which I'm pretty sure I would leave somewhere and then not know where it was, I have this really ugly pink basket. And the funny thing is, is that it's sort of become a topic of well, not so much a topic of conversation, but it connects me with people when I'm out. Mm, mm -hmm. People see it and they want to know what I'm doing Ah. or they want what I have in my basket. And it's like an icebreaker for conversations, which is really fun because I make really awesome connections with people when I'm out and about. I feel Mm. like when I first started doing this, I I was lurking off the side of the trail and the bushes and I didn't really want to be seen. And then people would see me anyway and then I would startle them and it was just really awkward and now mm-hmm. I've gotten much more bold about what I'm doing and much more willing to engage with people mm-hmm. and I actually really like it and so I was hiking last weekend and I ended up inadvertently walking with a, a couple for an hour and talking about mm-hmm. mushrooms and then I sat on a log for half an hour and talked to another <laughs> couple about mushrooms and I helped yeah. a woman identify a chicken of the woods and then I connected with a couple of other people who are foraging, a younger yeah. couple. 
And it's all because of that basket. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I feel like I need to see this basket now, but um, I'll go get the basket. I don't know what, what's in it, but I'll be right back. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. <laughs> okay. I feel like I need to name the basket. Oh, <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yeah yeah very, it's cute it's very yeah. simple it's very simple mm -hmm. and so this is what I use to collect uh samples and also to forage and so yes I love it I, if I set it down there's no way I can lose it yeah well thank you for grabbing that for <laughs> for me <laughs> um that's awesome I have a couple more questions um how can flora and funga influence the future in your eyes as a whole? Um, well, I know specifically that I've been dabbling and reading a lot about mycology specifically. Mm -hmm. In that sense, reading is um, kind of a luxur luxury for me at this point. And it'll be a winter project when I'm not out in the field quite as much. Although in the winter time, as you know, I photograph lichens. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to definitely delve more into a few topics that I'm very interested in. One is uh, mycoremediation. Yes. And so that is um, using fungi to clean up the environment. So mm -hmm. whether it's um, radiation or oil spills or heavy metals in the soil, um, there are some folks who are using mushrooms to clean up the environment. Yes. So that's super exciting. And then another thing I've been reading about is um, mushroom leather. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you know about that, but there's a company that has made um, mushroom leather and I think they've paired with Adidas possibly oh, to whoa. actually make that a reality. So Ooh. in the future we could be wearing um, you know, mushroom leather shoes, which I think yeah. is great because, yeah. um, you know, fungi are very uh, eco-friendly as far as, you know, raising them for um, resources. And that's mm -hmm. another thing, using mushrooms for natural resources, like building materials, yes, um, packaging materials. So mm -hmm. getting rid of styrofoam or getting rid of cardboard and making um you know mycelium based packaging materials plywood insulation for mm -hmm. construction um you know is more of a protein source i think that that's becoming um less fringe and more mainstream yes, um, I agree. you know the carbon footprint for raising mushrooms and making food out of them is much less than raising animals, mm -hmm. um, you know, so those are definitely some of the areas that I'm interested in. Oh, and also um, mycelial coffins and, um, you know, basically like green burial techniques using mm -hmm. mushroom mycelium. Very interesting topic for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, my interview with Howard Sprouse um, on microremediation was really cool. And I actually keep in touch with him. So I hope mm -hmm. that he has some fun projects going on with that too. Um, and yeah, I want to get in contact with some people with the leather or um, like mushroom protein, I, I think like me tie or meat, um, stuff like that. I want to get into. So yeah, those are um, good examples. I should find the leather people with Adidas. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like very crazy that that could be a reality. I like that. Yeah. It's, um, very durable stuff. Mm -hmm. I saw a cool article once where a woman had made a canoe form oh and gosh. that she grew mycelium in that form. Okay. And she okay. made an actual functional floating canoe out of it. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. The, really awesome. the creativity <laughs> that people can have for that with mushrooms and fungi. Hey, uh, fungi are the future. It's, it is. It's not just a saying, it's a reality. <laughs> it is. I like yeah. that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, where can people find you? And do you have any resources that you want to share to the listeners? Um, currently, the best place to find me is on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So 
Again, it's uh, Meg Madden, M-A-D-D-E-N design. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people are welcome to follow me or send me a DM and say hello, ask me questions. Uh, If you send me photos of mushrooms to identify, it's helpful if they're in focus and (laughs) (laughs) you get a photo of the top and the bottom of the mushroom. And uh, I get lots of people asking if things are edible and... My answer always is, um, I won't identify an edible mushroom for you based on a couple of pictures mm-hmm. <laughs> that you send me in a DM. Um, you know, foraging is great and I'm all for it. I'm not a forager specifically. I'm a myco educator and photographer. Mm-hmm. I forage incidentally if I'm out and there are yummy things to forage. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I recommend to people that they take a class or go out with a forager or, mm-hmm. you know, are very, very more than a hundred percent sure of what they're eating before they eat it. Yes. Um, Agreed. Because, you know, there are some bad mushrooms out there that you don't want to eat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's the best way so far working on a website over the winter, um, you know, basic gallery, um, how to find me, a schedule of upcoming events. I've found Mm -hmm. that I'm starting to need that because I'm doing Mm -hmm. a lot more walks and talks and presentations and things like that. So, um, but I'll post all of that to my Instagram. Perfect. You are a busy woman and yeah. Awesome. (laughs) It's great. It's fun. I love it. And I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Perfect. I like that answer. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention or anything that I didn't ask you? Um, no, I think that we covered quite a lot. Good. Well, awesome. I'm so excited that I finally got to talk to you and I'm excited about your future and with the account and everything. So thank you for taking your time and um, doing this interview with me. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Take care. See ya. Bye.